So in this tutorial, we are going to be focusing on the sound of Apollonia. So Apollonia are Ganganasia, Shonky and Dia Sandrum, and we're going to be looking at a couple of reference tracks of theirs and just sort of working out what the what the style is all about. And then I'm going to take you through a loop that I've made with an Apollonia style. We're going to look at some of the techniques, some of the characteristics of the sound, and how you could go about achieving them to put them into your own productions. So let's dive in and have a listen. So the first track we're going to listen to is um, called Trinidad. And we're going to listen out for some of the um, characteristics of the sound. So let's have a listen. So I'd say typically it's quite rolling and you've got those, it's very perk driven and it's so I'd say it's heavily percussive. There's delay on the percussion and the hats. It's got a rolling and repetitive groove. Uh, so let's keep going. You can hear some held strings in there and it's very groove driven. You've got shakers, you've got 16th hats in there. But well, the drum patterns are really simple, but you've got like the snares and the claps will groove a little bit. So let's keep going into the, the arrangement a little bit more. Which might be characterized as an awareness of the strange that some... So the, the kicks come out slightly, or it's, it's maybe there'll be a use of filters to really hold everything back. And then they'll chuck things back in, but the arrangements are typically quite simple. And also you'll hear that there's a Moog bass in there with a really rolling bass line. There's a spoken word vocal in there. Very repetitive groove. Um, yeah. Something's not quite right. You got an arpeggiated line in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this track as a reference and I'm going to try and rebuild it just kind of roughly so that you can see the production process that they've gone into it. But before we do that, I also wanted to show you an example of Shonky's style. So Boot Shonky's, but it, you'll, you'll hear that the things, uh, it, you know, it's very similar. We've got, it's very heavily percussive. You've got that spoken word vocal in there, simple drum pattern, 16th and straight, but you've also got like a, a very rolling bass line in there. And you'll also hear that the filter has been applied in a high pass filter to take everything out and then drop everything back in for impact. Spoken word vocal. You can hear the percussion in the background. The filters on the on the kick to take out the bass. Now I am filled with love and I sing a love song. A song for yesterday, today, tomorrow. And then it comes back in. So you'll see that the arrangements and the style of the production are very similar as we listen to a lot of their stuff. So let's try and apply that into a, a project. I've built a track that um, is in this style and let's just have a little look at how I've put it together. Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I have put together a loop which is in the style of Apollonia's early stuff and I've just picked up some of the characteristics that you typically see and for this track, I actually used um, Trinidad as a reference. So there'll be lots of it's pretty similar, but there's some, some sounds are pretty diff different. Um, but what I'm going to do first of all is just play the loop all the way through so that you can have a listen to the sounds that are in there and then we're going to look at lots of different ways that we could um, achieve this sort of sound. I'll show you the sources where the samples have come from. I'll show you how I put together the notes in the in things like the bass line. I'll show you some of the sound design that um, has took place to get to where I am with um, things like the, the synths or the, the stabs, and the pads and things. And yeah, just generally show you the processing that I've um, used to try and get that, you know, the shonky Died Danganasia sound. Um, so let's have a listen first of all.
Okay, so it's not a full track, but it's um, certainly in the style of Apollonio as close as I could get it. So what makes it an Apollonia style track? Well, we spoke briefly about some of the, the characteristics of the sound. I think in particular for me, what I think of, what I'm going to do actually, I'm just going to turn off this, this studio, this tape um, on here. We'll get to that, but it's just causing a lot of noise. So while I'm talking, it might be a little bit annoying. So um, for me, the conga massively is, uh, I mean, it just reminds me of shonky. So some of the boot shonk edits and things like that have got this typical rolling conga. With the delay on there. And then also I would say the these sort of dusty drums, but with the groove of the drums is very typical of Apollonia's style. It's those extra little bits that fill in the, the groove of the snares and the claps and things like that, that for me is a really distinctive part of their style. And also this moog bass that's playing in like a really sort of simple rolling moody bass line. And then things like the, the stabs. I'd say it's more of a, a, a pad that that's opening out, but we'll look at how I put that together. Things like the held strings. The spoken word vocals. We discussed about this in the past and uh, we have different opinions on that. I happen to be one that just doesn't particularly notice much. And then this with the delay on as well. So it's really simple use of um, the, the most basic effects like delay and also filters and things like that. So another thing I would say is typical of this style, I've actually got a filter on the master bus, which is a high pass filter. And every now and again, I'm turning that on just to take the kick out. So you'll hear an example of that here. And it's just a unique way of breaking up the arrangement because it is quite rolling. There's not a big sort of breakdown where everything comes out and there's loads of different one shots and effects. It is simple, basic rolling house music, but what the, what is key is that the elements there work together and you know there's a certain mood to these tracks. And then of course, we've got this arpeggiated line that's come from the SQ80. So all of those things together, including these shakers and tams, which again, have got the delay on. All put together, actually give it that Apollonia vibe. So how did I achieve this? How did I put it together? Well, let's break down each of the individual elements and you'll be able to see and apply this to your own productions if you wanted to. So starting off with the kick then, it's your typical sort of 909 kick. Um, there's not really much to be said here. A lot of the time in these tunes, they're using like um, classic drum machines. You've got um, in here, you've got the just a 909 kick, which I got from a Suban sample pack from Sample Market. Some really nice clean dr drum samples that have been recorded from hardware. Um, so yeah, just keeping that in there and just keeping the classic drum sounds, which really just prominent in all the Apollonia stuff and the stuff that the artists are doing on their own as well. Then um, in terms of the processing, I took a little bit of the top out with um, from, from about 10K, um, just because there was some noise in there, and uh, but nothing too major. And then I rolled it off quite harshly at 30 Hertz, like I tend to do. And then I added on a transient master just to give the kick a bit more of a, of a punch to cut through and I brought the sustain down so that transient is really popping through in the mix and that's it shorten the decay of the kick as well uh, and then if we're going to take a look at the rest of the drums this is what the whole drum track sounds when everything's in and with the kick as well So 
I'll start with the processing that I've got on the drum group. So I have got the decapitator on there. I've basically started off with the drum fatter preset and then I've brought the dry wet down. I've obviously um, altered the output to, to make sure that I'm gain staging correctly and um, we're not getting more signal coming in, a louder signal coming in, which would make me think that uh, it sounds better. Um, I'm going to do a video on gain staging, but for now it's not too important. What I have done is I've brought the tone down a little bit, but we haven't got any cuts going on and keeping it as it is because I want it to be quite bright. I want to keep that detail in there. And then I've just put a compressor on there just to glue all the drums together. Then if we look at the snare, so the snare, really simple pattern. And I've used an 808 snare, which has come from the Gold Baby Tape 808 sample pack. And it's, yeah, it's one that's been processed by tape. But I did a little bit of processing because uh, I felt like it felt a little bit flat. So um, I used the decapitator on it. Again, just starting with um, one of the drum fattener presets because it really does give it some character, this saturation here. Uh, I felt like that wasn't enough. Uh, it still sounded pretty dry. So if I turn everything off, you'll, you'll see my processes here. So really dry. I didn't want to add it to the, um, the reverb that I've got set up for the drums, but I did want to give it its own little reverb because if you listen to the original Trinidad, which is what this track is based on, this um, it sort of used it as a reference. The snare hasn't got a huge bit of reverb on it, but the, the things like the shake of the timbre and all the perks and things like that, they're in a, a bit of a larger space. So what I wanted to do was I just wanted to put it in a, in a bit of a smaller space. So I just used the um, Pro R from uh, Fab Filter just to give it its own little space. So it's nice and short that I brought the decay right down. It's, it's close, it's up front, so that we've still got the detail. But the snare's pretty low in the context of the whole mix because that's what it was like in the original. So you can see that the, that it's sort of really sitting, at, the way I visualize it is underneath the kick. So it's not at the same volume, it's not something that's in your face, it's just part of the groove. So yeah, and then eventually we do get a clap in which layers with it. But uh, And then I also just did a little bit of EQing on there just to take out the bottom end. And then finally, I used the Fab Filter Satin and there's a really good preset in here which I use quite a bit. I bought the mix down a bit because it can be a bit intense. It's called Tape Transients. And then this is what the snare sounds like with all that processing on there. And I just brought the decay down as well. So it sounds much better. Without the processing, you've obviously got a very dry snare. So we did decapitator, bit of crunch, bit of reverb, EQ, and then finally a bit of uh, bit of saturation from Saturn. So yeah, there you go. Uh, and then the conga now. This is a big characteristic of the sound. So what I've done is I've put in a a really simple straight. Uh, conga pattern and then I've gone in and manually drawn in lots of randomized velocities because you want this to be sounding organic you want it to be sounding like there's some sort of human feel to it because the these these Apollonia tunes are really groovy and they're very groove focused so just having a little bit of a human feel is great so I found this conga sample which was exactly like the one in the original Trinidad so this has come from the Zero G Interface Dance Sample Pack. And in there, there's a drums folder, and there's in, in the drums folder, there's some percussions, and in there, it's the Conga OS About MA, the file name, as you can see there. So what I've done is put a simple um, pattern in there. So if I turn off all the processing, you can see that, I've drawn in this randomized velocity, but then what I've also done is I've, add, I've used to add some random, which if you go into the MIDI effects and you go to velocity, you've got this add some random here. Well, what that does is just adds even more randomness in there with the velocities. And the velocity is obviously how hard or soft a note is pressed. And the same applies for drums as well. So um, yeah, basically that's what I did. And then in the original, it's obviously got some delay on it. So. And that just sounds so Apollonia to me, so with everything else.
there you go. Uh, I did actually do a little bit of EQing on this just to take out the bottom end. And then finally, this amazing micro shift plugin from Sound Toys. So without it, what I'll do is I'll push the dry wet so you can really hear what it's doing. Just giving it a little sense of stereo um, so you can focus it on certain frequencies, there's different styles. It's like a chorus essentially. Um, and then you've got the detune and the tight loose, the, how tight or loose the delay is. Really simple plugin, but it, I use it on all sorts, especially synths and things like that. It just gives things a real presence in the, in the stereo field and, and pushes them out to the sides. Uh, I'd, avoid, I'd avoid using it too much on, on things that have got low mid information or, and I definitely probably don't use it on bass. Um, but I mean, chorus sometimes sounds nice on bass, but experiment with it and use your ears, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's basically the conga line. Then we've got this little shaker thing going on. Again, I've gone in, I've drawn some random, some uh, manually randomized velocities to give it a human feel. And then I've gone in, I've got two different shaker samples in here. I've panned them left and right so that it's got some, again, some stereo presence. And I've applied the same delay. So the delay settings for the conga and the um, shaker are the same, just so that they groove together nicely. I've got the dry wet set at about 40%. And I've moved the EQ across a little bit, so we've just got the top end the feedbacks at fifty percent, and we're using the timing of, of uh, number three there on the on the Ableton Zone delay, and they're both synced to the left and right channels, and it's exactly the same for the the conga, except I brought the dry wet down just a touch more. So yeah, with that, I mean you could even go as far as adding some random in the in the shaker as well, like I did before. So yeah, and then I mean no no other processing on that. And then we've got this tambourine which which rolls on sixteenths. So same again. I've got these um just to show you where the shaker samples came from actually first. So uh this one came from the turbo samples hot creative tech house, and there's some individual drum hits in there, and they've got some shakers. But you can find these sort of one shots anywhere, but just in case you wanted to know which ones these were, they both come from that. Uh, so that again, so there's that one and that one again panned left and right and then in here we've got this uh, tambourine which so it's a bit more metallic sounding than the, the sort of shaker um, the egg shaker style that we had in the other, other one so they sort of complement each other really well again panned left and right these have come from essential web from mars so basically like there's a company called uh, samples from mars if you've not heard of it already they do some great one shots from lots of different drum machines they've got a pack that you can buy that's called essential web from mars it's got loads of different drum machines and and like y y there's individual hits and they've all been processed as well so they sound great and they come from the original machines so they're really clean some of them are processed with tape some tube things like that so gold baby and sample from mars for the original drum machine hits are a really good place to go so yeah, there's there you go. You've got these two together. Then with the congas. And then a snare. Just a really classic Apollonia groove. And then to kick things on a bit further on, we've got these two elements that come in. So here, when everything drops back in. It just really, these dusty drums coming in. So we've got like an open hi-hat 909 and a, a 909 clap, and it just adds more groove and a bit more energy to it. It happens in Trinidad as well. Um, but yeah, just because the arrangement's pretty simple, there's points where we're gonna have to add some more energy. So adding in drums like that are a really good thing to do, and it's a classic Apollonia trick. Um, these samples were pretty heavily processed originally. They've come from the samples from Mars, 909 from Mars pack. Individual hits, there's some open hi-hats in there, so that's just a 909 hi-hat. Uh, and then also we've got this clap, which has come from, let me tell you, Probably the same pack, I would imagine. Yeah, 99 from Mars. So um, what I have done, though, is 
I've applied Decimort with the MPC60 preset, brought the dry wet down very slightly, and I've just brought this frequency down a little bit. So without it, if I solo that, sounds good, but we can actually add a little bit more bit crushing and have a bit of distortion in there that's gonna make it sound even more dusty. Just takes out some of the harshness in the tops, which is really what we want to be doing. So there you go, there's the drum tracks. Really simple. With the clap pattern, we've got this, sort of these double claps in here, so. And if you hear the, the snare and the clap together, you have this, they're sort of like filling in with each other and they're bouncing off each other. So yeah, it's just about getting that groove. And all the drums are straight. I've got no swing on the drums at all. Um, we just kept it nice and straight for this tune. So the next question that you are probably thinking of asking is how do you get to that Apollonia bass? Well, it's a typical Moog bass. Now I was, I was trying to fiddle for a while getting something close, but um, then I stumbled across a sample that is just absolutely spot on for the sound that you'll hear in Trinidad. And I was like, I'm not going to get as close with the synth. So what I did was I got the sample, I tuned it using the tuner. So basically you set up uh, like a loop of just the note C like this. And I'll just have it constantly playing like that. Oops, so get it on the bars like that. And you can see here that it was C. And then what you do is you go in here and it gives you uh, some more options here. So I had to transpose it down by four semitones. If I set it to zero, the original sample was in E. So if I play notes, it's gonna be out of key. So I then tweaked down. And you can see that that's C. So you can tune samples to how you want them. Sometimes they might not be in C. And obviously that's what the root note you want if you're using a sample. I also did a little bit of detuning with some sense, but it was only very subtle. Um, and there you go. So the bass notes are E, C sharp, and C. And I like to mix together um, like two. When I'm doing bass lines, I listen, it's, too, it's, it's very Apollonius to have two notes that right next to each other like that because um, there's a little bit of dissonance there and it's got a real mood to it, that. So a bit of processing on there. So what I did was I took out some of the, some frequencies around 300 hertz because there was a little bit of muddiness. I took out loads of low end from about 30, 37 hertz just to take out that real low sub. You can probably... Really subtle, do you know what I mean? And then some of the tops, just some of the, some of the noise. Um, I've got the bass mono preset on there just to make sure that we're not in stereo and we lose it and we've got some weird panning going on. I use the track spacer to receive um, info from the kick to side chain it. And then I used Saturn. So I'm using Saturn loads at the moment. And this is just a little I didn't use a preset, I just went straight in here. And what you can do, let me just turn the satin off. And then you put it on. A huge difference. And what I love about it is you can do multi-band processing, which means you can process different bands of frequencies in different ways. So what I've done here in this first band is the tops and the mids I've boosted by about 6 dB. So that's bringing out that detail in the top. I've put a bit of drive on and I've pushed the dynamics, which is basically a compressor. So it's gonna get things nice and tight in that multiband compression, basically. And then um, I'm just adding a little bit of drive. I use the clean tube setting on that. And then a warm tape on the low end. That's obviously pushed a little bit, but not as much as the mids. And then you can go in and you can change the tone as well. So you've got this control over the saturation. And if you go in here, you've got loads of different types of saturation that you can add. But I mean, and you push the feedback up a little bit. 
but without it. It's just worlds apart. It really helps your bass cut through. And with this Apollonia stuff, um, you're really wanting it to sound um, analog and you know they want that saturation and you want everything to, to, to sort of cut through in a mix up so there you go so really simple that bass line just runs all the way through and then um, another bit of um, eq just to take out the, the bottom and the top uh, for just whatever reason i was um, thinking at the time but obviously needed it so okay uh moving on to the strings then it's just a held string I've sent it to this reverb, which is uh, about two and a half seconds decay. There's a few things going to it. The vocal. But yeah, basically, these, these strings, I used a preset from the Cork Triton, which has got some really good classic sounding strings. It's called Makoto Shelly. And you'll find that inside the strings folder of course and it's just a held note so I held an E just all the way through and that runs through the track but to give it a little bit of movement a little bit of modulation I used filter freak and I tweaked this preset pushed the, the dry weight up a bit and I've, we've got this little bit of movement really subtle but obviously it give, if something's running all the way through the track you want it to sound there's some movement going on, it might be a little bit irritating after a while. So there you go. Now, with this, these stabs, they're kind of stabs, but they're more sort of like a pad that's got some modulation on it. So you'll see here, with the cutoff, what I've done. Now, I went into the, the Juno because I think what's really important if you're trying to achieve that Apollonia sound is that you're using the same sort of gear, whether that be VST emulations of it or the actual hardware itself, um, that they're going to be using. So you can take a look online and you'll see what stuff shonky has got in his studio. He's got all sorts of stuff. But you'll see that you'll always have these classic synths. So the Juno 106, for example, is a really classic synth. So you can know that the way that that will sound in a VST and in a hardware sense is going to be close to um, the artists that you're wanting to sound like. So in this case, I went for the classic 106, which is used heavily by lots and lots of producers, including Apollonia. And um, I used... I basically tweaked this preset quite a bit. So I started with the preset and then I played with the envelope. So you'll see that it's got a really slow attack, um, which means that it takes a while for the sound to reach its highest volume. So it gives us a sense that there's a, that it's like a sweeping through. And then watch what happens to the frequency when I play the track. If I play the track, you'll see my, my, my um, see if I can make this a little bit smaller so you'll be able to see. There we go. Okay. So you'll see that when I've done this automation with the cutoff, what happens to it here? So by doing that, it's just sweeping through the cutoff, and um, also I've then set up a another filter, which is moving. If you look here, the, the rate of one point five bars, and if you look, it's only very sort. So that's just going to be moving just a little bit as well to add an extra bit of movement at a different rhythm, um, and then we've got the Ableton Zero delay again, but we're using. Um, four, the same four on there, and I brought the dry wet down, pushed that up a bit. So you'll hear if it let it tail out. That tail and the delay. I've also added the chorus onto this as well. Um, and yeah, just played with the, the filter a little bit just to, I find that the 106 and, and just the Juno in general, not so much the Juno 1 that I have because that doesn't have um, hands-on controls, unfortunately. Um, but like with a synth like this, it's so easy to get to grips with synthesis. 
And that's why it's such a classic synth because you know you've got very little controls on there and it's just very basic. So you've got your your oscillator here and you can choose basically which waveform you want. You've got a high pass filter, you've got a voltage control filter, which you can basically just tweak like any other filter. You've got your ADSR and your chorus, and then there's an ARP on there as well. So um, super simple synth, but very effective. And yeah, it's sort of got that sound that I was looking for in this. In terms of any other processing, I uh, added a micro shift onto it. I used the double preset just to give it some presence in the stereo field. So without it, with it, So it's subtle, but it is actually doing quite a lot. Um, and then this UAD Studer tape, I put some Hi-Fi hi Shine preset. You can hear that the noise is moving. Well, those sorts of things, you know, obviously we're not with, this is made entirely in the box. We want it to sound like it, it hasn't been made entirely in the box. We want that classic sound. And this UAD Studer is wicked. It just adds like tape saturation and some noise and stuff onto whatever you send it to. Then we've got this ARP line, so. So for this, I'm just holding uh, one note, but I have got a chord set up. So I've got this M add nine chord. The track is in E minor, so I've put it in E minor on the scalar inside this random chords generate plugin. And then it's just playing a very simple E, like, it's just one note, but it's making it into a chord with that plugin. And then I used this preset called Finding Atonement. I found the ARP pretty hard to get right. It's close enough for me. Um, and then just did a little bit of processing on it in the way of like some movement with an LFO on the filter again. And I also used this micro shift just to, I used the lead spread mix because it felt like a lead. Um, and it just gives it a bit more width. And then finally just rolled out the low end on a filter and that's it. Panned it to the left a little bit, but nothing too flashy there. So really simple stuff. We've then got these, this vocal here. So there was a sample pack that I've got that has lots of different, um, so it's the techno tracks from Master Bits. There's a vocals plus bonus folder in there and there's like Moon Talks. So if I put in Moon Talks, I'll just show you. We're go, same type, we're go. Coming forward, coming down. But like, then I just chopped it up and then I put a, like a reverb, a delay on it rather with them um, on, on the three setting. I pulled the dry wet down. And then if you just listen to that. Send it to the to the reverb. That's it. Then I was looking for some spoken word. So uh, Apollonia obviously use spoken word stuff quite a lot in their in their tunes, and I wasn't too um, concerned about what it was saying because obviously it's just um, showing you how you'd go about it. But I'm sure that you'd be able to find more interesting samples. Um, so and then with the EQ, I boosted the the high mids to top end a little bit around 5k to give it some detail because it was come from an old interview use the micro shift to but i really pushed it discussion about this in the past and so without that discussion about this in the past and uh, we have different opinions on that i it's wider Pour forward uh and then yeah that's basically it i just rolled out some at low end on it as well and then sent it to the reverb so discussion about this in the past and uh, we have different Finally, I added some vinyl crackle onto it and rolled it all out. So this has come from uh, like a, a Sample Magic Deep Analog House um, sample pack. It's just some vinyl noise, so. And there you go. So basically, just to go through the master, I did add the Studio on there and that makes a huge difference. And 
and I did it in an audio effect rack because unfortunately, um, the UAD stuff uh, in Ableton, I've never been able to work out where the dry wet is, which is really annoying. But this is a way where I can mix in the dry wet signal by just using an audio effect rack. So yeah, adds a bit of noise, adds a bit of fullness to it. And then finally, I just did um, a bit of EQ on the master here, just as, as, as a bit of a, um, a mastering. Did a, an EQ, and there's also some maximizer to make it a little bit louder. So in terms of the arrangement, I think what's really characteristic is that there's no big like crashes, big moments. It's just really rolling. And you'll hear these different sections like this one, where we have the, the filter engaging. So... So you might take the kick out for a little section. And then you'll just bring new elements in and take them out and then you'll engage the filter on the master like this. Rather than having big rolls and things like that, you're just taking things in and out. It's just really, really simple because uh, a lot of this stuff is hardware driven. So you've got to imagine how the writing process is. It's like more jamming. You just you're just muting channels. You're bringing things back in, and just imagine if you wanted to achieve this sound, how it would have been made in the first place, and that will sort of dictate how your arrangement process will go. So. Um, let's just take this section for example so you'll see that the kick comes out here and then the bass comes out and but we've replaced the bass with something else so we'd swap things around maybe in a mixer or something if we were doing this as a live jam and then we strip everything out here and everything comes back in so let's just concentrate on the arrangement section around here and you'll get a bit of a vibe for it So simple, but there you go. So that is just how I would approach making the Apollonia style of house music. Hopefully that's been useful. If you want me to do a little bit more on this, I could maybe do a second part and we can make a track from scratch. I could focus specifically on one particular member of Apollonia. Maybe I could do some of the uh, the shonky edits or something like that as, as boot shonk. But let me know and yeah, hopefully that's been useful.